Attention, attention please. May I have your attention? Please rise for this year's graduating class. Please be seated. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the convocation ceremony for the University of Utah College of Pharmacy. My name is Randy Peterson, Dean of the College, and it will be my pleasure to present to you today an incredible group of graduates, the University of Utah College of Pharmacy Class of 2023. <laughs> today, we're here to honor 72 remarkable graduates receiving PharmD, PhD, and MS degrees. 
I'm pleased to welcome all of you who are joining us here in person in the lovely Kingsbury Hall. It's wonderful that we can all be together to celebrate the remarkable achievements of these graduates. I also want to acknowledge the many others joining us today virtually from locations near and far, faculty, staff, university officials, alumni, family members, and friends. We know you love and are proud of these graduates. Thank you for sharing this special day with them. Some of you are unable to be with here in person, but your love and support is felt nonetheless. Whether joining in person or virtually, I extend my thanks to each of you who has supported and inspired our students throughout their journey to this happy moment. I would now like to invite Professor Crystal Beischer to read our Indigenous Land Acknowledgement. We acknowledge that this land, which is named for the Ute tribe, is the traditional and ancestral homeland of the Shoshone, Paiute, Goshute, and Ute tribes. The University of Utah recognizes and respects the enduring relationship that exists between many indigenous peoples and their traditional homelands. We respect the sovereign relationship between tribes, states, and the federal government, and we affirm the University of Utah's commitment to a partnership with Native nations and urban Indian communities through research, education, and community outreach activities. Thank you. I'd like to recognize a few distinguished guests that are here with us today and ask that they stand to be recognized. Glenn Senninger, Group Vice President at Oracle Corporation and President of University of Utah Alumni, welcome. Phyllis Vetter, Chief Counsel for the University of Utah. <laughs> Dr. Bill Higuchi, Distinguished Professor and recipient of an honorary doctorate uh, degree conferred by University President Taylor Randall last week. <laughs> Doctors Howe and Joan Wolf. Sponsors of the Wolf Prize, which was awarded to Dr. Autumn McKnight, one of our graduate students, who will be speaking to us later in the program today. I'd also like to thank uh, the several people in the Dean's Office of the College who made this event happen today. They've helped each of our students in countless ways over the past several years. I imagine you, as students, appreciate what they have done for you, and I know the staff has developed a deep affection for you. I'd like to acknowledge Shauna Webster, Bill Carney, Cameron Shepard, J.P. Varney, Ryan Boyack, Tyler Clark, Kelsey Tomes, Stevie Carter, Hizel Gomez, Misty Christensen, Krista Lurcher, and Judy Babbitt. And there's another group of individuals that need to be thanked today, perhaps most of all, for making this all possible. Graduates, would you please stand up, turn around, and thank your parents, family, and your friends who've helped you to get to where you are today? There's a lot of love and gratitude in this room today. Fantastic. Last week, the university held its commencement exercises. I suspect we're all familiar with the idea that graduation is the commencement or beginning of a new life as a graduate. Today's ceremonies are a little different. They're called a convocation. Convocation comes from the Latin con, meaning together, and vocare, meaning to call. So at a convocation, we're being called together. At the simplest level, we've all been called together today to celebrate your accomplishments and to be together one last time. But this year, given the troubling polarization that's tearing at the fabric of our society, I can't help but think we all need to give special heed to the call to come together. 
You've been trained as clinicians, as healers, and as leaders, as problem solvers. And as we now send you out into the world, we take hope in your ability not only to treat patients, but to heal broken relationships and to call people together. Coming together requires more than associating with those who are like us. It requires the difficult work of extending kindness, respect, and dignity to those with whom we disagree, or even those who have injured us. I suspect each of us has people in our lives that are difficult for us to understand, or perhaps even difficult for us to withstand, but the human capacity for overcoming these divisions is remarkable. I recently learned of a woman named Sai Snar who lives here in Salt Lake. Perhaps some of you may even know her. Several years ago, her 18-year-old son, Zach, took his friend, Yvette, up Emigration Canyon to Little Dell Reservoir to teach her how to photograph the moon. While they were photographing, a stranger approached them and in an, in an act of random violence, killed Zach. The police captured the perpetrator, a man named George, and he was convicted of murder. But as you can, as you can probably imagine, Sai's life was just completely shattered by the death of her son. For years, she and her husband carried their anger and hatred for George around with them, as they described it, like heavy rocks in a backpack. And then, just a few years ago, they realized that they needed to empty their backpacks of all that anger. Sai learned through an acquaintance that George wanted to make a connection, and she decided that she did too. In 2018, they exchanged letters, and then dozens of letters. In 2020, Sai visited George in prison. She learned of his own tragic life circumstances and his genuine regret. She found forgiveness and even affection for George and is currently advocating for his release from prison. The amazing story of Sai Snar is told in a KSL podcast called The Letter, and it's a remarkable example of someone who managed to overcome division and animosity under extraordinary circumstances. But we all have opportunities to create positive connections with those who might seem very different from us. I've been fascinated to learn about a professor in New York named Arthur Aaron, who conducted a series of studies he called interpersonal closeness studies. He and his colleagues developed a method that was remarkably effective at calling people together. In their experiments, strangers were paired up in a lab and spent 90 minutes asking and answering well, with each other a specific set of 36 questions. Immediately after the 90 minutes, the strangers were separated and assessed using various tools to determine the closeness of the new relationship. The exercise was surprisingly effective in creating love and closeness. For 30% of participants, this new relationship, only 90 minutes old, was the most intimate of all the relationships they had. Several lasting relationships were formed among the participants and there was at least one marriage among the few dozen pairs tested. The 36 questions work because they encourage sincere sharing of our beliefs and vulnerabilities. The, author study, the study authors wrote, one key pattern associated with the development of a close relationship among peers is sustained, escalating, reciprocal, personal self-disclosure. When we actually get to know people, uh, at more than a superficial level, we see their vulnerabilities and it's hard not to see them in a different light and have newfound affection for them. Graduates, today you join the ranks of the biomedical pioneers and healthcare heroes who will be safeguarding the health and wellness of our society. Every year we send graduates uh, off with a mixture of sadness at your departure and excitement to see how your careers will unfold. Today, at this convocation, we add to those emotions an extra sense of reassurance and hope. Hope that you will not only be the leaders who usher, into a positive, usher us into a positive future for pharmacy, but also the leaders who will call us together for a future of greater harmony and respect. 
We know you have the skill and compassion to usher us into that positive future, and we are counting on you. Let me close with the words of Martin Luther King Jr. Yes, it is love that will save our world and our civilization, love even for enemies. So this morning, as I look into your eyes, I pray, I say to you, I love you. I would rather die than hate you. And I'm foolish enough to believe that through the power of this love somewhere, men of the most recalcitrant bent will be transformed. And then we will be able to matriculate into the university of eternal life because we had the power to love our enemies, to bless those persons that cursed us, and even decide to be good to those persons who hated us. Thank you for entrusting your education to us. Today, we honor you for all your hard work and achievements. We are proud to have you as colleagues. On Wednesday evening, we held an awards banquet for the College of Pharmacy, where graduating PharmD and PhD students were presented with a number of awards, as were a few faculty and preceptors. These awards are all listed in your program. Today, we'd like to take a few moments to announce and present several faculty awards that have been received. Our first professional year Teacher of the Year Award has gone to Dr. Carol Lim. Dr. Lim, would you please stand? Our second professional year Teacher of the Year is Dr. Joanne Lafleur. Oh, standing over here. Thank you, Dr. Lafleur. Our third professional year, Teacher of the Year, was Dr. Dan Witt. And our senior class distinguished teacher selected by this graduating class is Dr. Heather Nyman. We also award an overall College of Pharmacy Teacher of the Year Award. This year, the students in the College of Pharmacy have chosen Dr. Carol Lim as the College of Pharmacy Teacher of the Year. Congratulations, Dr. Lim. The IPPE Preceptor of the Year Award goes to Zach White. The Faculty Preceptor of the Year Award goes to Amber Johnson. The Advanced Preceptor of the Year Award goes to Anastasia Blair. Congratulations. <laughs> we have a truly amazing group of faculty here in the College of Pharmacy, and they received many national and international recognitions this year. Today, I want to call particular attention to one remarkable faculty member, Dr. Bill Higuchi, who last week received an honorary doctorate from the Univers University of Utah. William Bill Higuchi is a longtime U professor of pharmaceutics and pharmaceutical chemistry, where his tenure spanned from 1982 to 2007. Dr. Higuchi earned a PhD in physical chemistry from the University of California, Berkeley. His research focused on optimizing drug transport through skin, mucosal membranes, and within the gastrointestinal tract. He also pioneered bone and tooth preservation models. He was co-founder of four Utah biopharmaceutical companies, Theratec, Lipocene, Spriaso, and Asiant. He is recipient of Japan's Order of the Rising Sun. He also serves on the advisory board of the Heart Mountain Wyoming Foundation, which works to preserve the Japanese internment center where he met his late wife, Setsuko, as a child during World War II. Dr. Higuchi, will you please stand and be recognized?
congratulations to all these faculty and preceptor award recipients. We will now hear from our student speakers, Autumn McKnight, PhD, class of 2023, and Evan Hawes, PharmD, class of 2023. Here's a little bit about Autumn. Autumn McKnight is one of our College of Pharmacy PhD students and has been chosen as the recipient of this year's Wolf Prize. She graduated from the University of Minnesota and has worked in the fields of mycology, genomics, gut microbiota, immunology, and developmental biology before joining the Department of Pharmacology and Toxicology in January of 2020. As part of her thesis research, she studies a range of methods focusing on pharmac pharmacokinetic modeling and drug-drug interactions in medicinally complex children. Her graduate level research efforts have been acknowledged through the Don Gellert Graduate Research Fellowship, an F31 fellowship from the National Institutes of Health, and the American Foundation for Pharmaceutical Edu Education Predoctoral Fellowship in Pharmaceutical Sciences. Autumn has consistently demonstrated a commitment to teaching and mentoring with a particular emphasis on educating students from diverse backgrounds and working with community groups to bring science to the general public. Throughout her academic career, she has taught and mentored high school, undergraduate, and graduate students, as well as lab technicians, fellows, and postdocs. Beyond this, she is engaged with the community through programs such as INSPIRE, the NSF STEM Ambassador, and diversity and, uh, and science lecture series programs. Autumn's overarching career goal is to advance public health by integrating physiology and pharmacology into approaches that improve drug safety and efficacy in critically ill children. And now I'll also introduce our second speaker, Evan. Evan Hawes was born and raised in West Jordan, Utah, and graduated from Copper Hills High School with his pharmacy technician certification. After serving a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Argentina, he completed his Bachelor's of Public Health at Brigham Young University while working at Smith's Pharmacy as a pharmacy technician. For the past four years, he has been pursuing his Doctor of Pharmacy degree here at the University of Utah. He has worked at Intermountain Riverton Hospital for the past two years and has found a passion for acute care pharmacy. As a member of the class of 2023, he has served as a leader in multiple clubs, including this, the Utah Student Pharmacist Alliance and the Oncology and Pediatric Pharmacy Clubs. He's made lots of friendships with his class and is honored to have been chosen to speak to them today. He has a passion for critical care and pediatrics and is excited to continue his training as a pharmacy resident at St. Mark's Hospital here in Utah. We'll hear first from Autumn and then from Evan. I'm humbled to be the 2023 Wolf Prize recipient. The story behind the Wolf Prize and what it represents, teaching and providing opportunities for education to everyone means so much to me personally. I'm also honored to be standing here as a representative of the class of 2023 PhD students. I don't know if I'm the right person to be standing up here before you. I'm looking out at all of you excited about what we have all achieved and the success that will follow. At the same time, I cannot help but look back at how I ended up at this point. I'm certainly not who I predicted to be up here right now, someone who flunked out of undergrad and never really had a well-defined plan for my future until now. Certainly not someone you would emulate as a budding researcher. Although I do have to say, it has come in handy when telling my wonderful children what they should do and why. I can feel their eyes rolling from here. But I am truly grateful to them and my husband for supporting and encouraging me. When I started writing this speech, I had no idea where to begin. begin. I even typed in write speech for graduate school convocation into chat GPT. <laughs> it came up with a great speech, but it was too generic. It didn't highlight the euphoric ups and the life altering downs that we have all experienced as graduate students. 
So sadly, you will not be getting the great chat GPT speech today. This speech is of my own creation with personal research experiences that many of you in the audience will likely relate to. During my journey, I have learned the importance of sharing both good and bad experiences. It fosters an environment where all voices can be heard and support can be provided. We can then acknowledge the shared experiences and celebrate our own triumphs during our individual journeys. I have thought a lot recently about what brought me to this point. I would guess my main reason is similar to a lot of you. Having people in our lives who saw something in us that we never knew was there. We are all here thanks to incredible mentorship and support from those at the College of Pharmacy, primary mentors, and others in our lives, including family, friends, and even neighbors. Like many of you, I never thought this day would come. Until a few weeks ago, I always said if I would graduate and not when. Perhaps it's because I've yet to make it through what we in our lab like to call the stages of modeling. Frustration, depression, panic, disbelief, this is where things actually work, and pure joy. As you can see, these stages really can be applied to any research or life in general. The first stage is frustration. It is mainly frustration at ourselves for not being able to, success, to be successful on the first try or struggling to understand a concept. Despite knowing that failure is necessary to learn, we inconveniently forget this during the weeks upon weeks of struggling with few bright points to, for us to hold on to and keep us moving forward. There is a vast amount of troubleshooting individually and with others who have more expertise. What we don't realize is that during this stage, we are learning to communicate not only with people in our field, but fellows, students, technicians, and more. These discussions fuel new questions and collaborations. Although I should warn you that discussions about certain techniques such as probing and stripping protein membranes will get you some interesting looks at the hospital Starbucks, especially if you forget to mention the membrane component. After this stage comes depression. This is an unnecessarily long stage that likes to circulate back to visit quite often. Everyone has met the jaded grad student who sits in the corner or dark microscope room grumbling. The one who has realized that the only thing to come out of a year of work is one slide of data. This is the stage where I sat feeling completely defeated with tears in my eyes writing a letter of resignation to my primary mentor. This was the point in my research where despite my best efforts, none of the models were working. I would like to have some nice, wonderful statement to say about this stage and what can be learned. Perhaps going through this stage and all the struggle is necessary to make everything worth it. This stage shows us that we have the courage to leave the dark corners and microscope rooms to face anything and that we have an incredible support network of friends, family, and mentors to walk with us and help us along the way. Having made it through that long haul, we move on to the panic stage. As the name suggests, this is an intense stage. This is where I, having dug down deep to find some motivation to pair with my annoyingly unabating stubbornness, decided to try absolutely everything to get these models to work before finishing the resignation letter. When I say everything, I mean everything. I tore down and rebuilt the models piece by piece. This abstract model had become my nemesis, and I was going to beat it. I had become the disheveled, crazy-haired, wild-eyed looking grad student who seems to live at the lab and very well may. From this experience, I know that there are quite a few couches around that can be found to contain a panicked grad student during brief overnight napping periods. It is best to let us be. We can be unpredictable when woken. This is a stage that proves we deserve to be here. It takes strength, determination, and a little insanity to get to where you are sitting today. After hours and potentially days, inevitably an amazing thing happens. Something will work. This is when we move on to the disbelief, aka something actually works stage. It's 4 a.m., although I have no idea what time it is. My hair is sticking up in ways that defy gravity and my desk is littered with various beverages and food, I use the term extremely loosely here, containers. I'm intently staring at the computer screen where after adjusting a couple of settings, I am preparing to run a new model. I timidly move my cursor to the run button, sigh, and press down. At this point, I'm so tired that the bodily function of blinking has seemingly disappeared. All of a sudden, the output pops up. I do a double take. Somehow, the model has worked. After several minutes of staring and not blinking, I dare to look away. When I turn back, it's still there. 
Quickly, I press the save button and slowly back away from my computer. After a brief nap on one of those couches, I try to be brave and decide to rerun the model. Again, it works. This stage shows us what we are capable of, what other people have seen all along and had remained elusive to us. We really can do this. After a variable amount of time, reality hits followed by pure joy, the final and most wonderful stage. It is where we can finally see the finish line. It is a stage we are all in today. You have completed the stages of research. Congratulations. You should feel pride in yourselves. These stages can be rough, but as we move through them, we grow as researchers and individuals and begin to understand our strengths. It really has taken blood, sweat, and tears. Yet it has been a magical time where we have had years to learn, explore, and be curious. Throughout it all, we have made lifelong friends, had once-in-a-lifetime experiences, and realized how capable we are. Remember to share your experiences from this time and use them to be more understanding, to help and support future trainees. These stages will always be difficult, but if less time is spent on the struggle, then more time can be put into being curious. The outcomes from, from curiosity are absolutely incredible. Class of 2023, you are a product of this curiosity. You have and will continue to do incredible things. We made it to the finish line. As we all look out to our next steps, know that your experiences, struggles, and persistence throughout these five stages make you able to take on any challenges or new endeavors the future may hold. It is now time to go out and create our own stages of success. Thank you. Class of 2023, congratulations. I still remember attending orientation and thinking that we were gonna be classmates for a really long time. And I felt like today would never come. But here it is, and it came almost too quickly. Along the way, many of us had babies, got engaged and or married, and we all survived a worldwide pandemic. It was a long, hard fought four years. I want you to think back to how you felt when we first started all the hard work that lay ahead of you. Think about how much you have accomplished. As P1s, we struggled to learn biochemistry and immunology. As P2s, we quickly learned what Zoom was and, we, <clears throat> and tried to cram every piece of information we could into our brains. P3 year brought electives and preparing to learn on clinical rotations. P4 year brought more stress and learning than we ever thought possible. Remember all the hard work you put into this degree and celebrate the fact that you completed it. While on interviews over the past few months, I asked my interviewers what I should do between graduation and starting my residency so that I'll be prepared when I arrive on my first day. I expected things like practice vancomycin dosing, read through the diabetes guidelines one more time. Um, this is not what they told me. After hearing this, or excuse me, um, I, they all, almost all of them told me to take a break. After hearing this, I thought about how important it is for us to celebrate this great achievement. We have done something that few people can say they have done. We deserve time to relax, enjoy, and reset before moving on to our next great achievement. I encourage you to plan time to celebrate and make it a habit to do so for your many future accomplishments. I encourage you, there will always be more to do and achieve, but don't forget why you are doing it, and congratulate yourself once you have completed it. And I will be taking that advice that I received to heart, so please do not text or email me for the next week. <laughs> While preparing to give this speech, I thought about the things I learned over the past four years that were impactful to the way I learn, practice pharmacy, and keep balance in my life. I do not pretend to be a, the best at any of those things, but I hope my experiences can help you. While on rotations, one of my favorite preceptors really pushed me to my limits. One of the most difficult things I had to do was counsel pediatric patients and their parents about medications that would help prevent their immune systems from fighting off their bone marrow transplants. 
These medications are difficult to understand, and I struggled to come up with a way to effectively communicate everything the family needed to know in a way that they could easily understand it. My preceptor encouraged me to make a list that I could keep with me and that had all the points that I wanted to touch on. I could then adapt that list to any medication I needed to counsel on, and it would become a habit. I would no longer need a list to help me remember. I have found that making habits such as this one has immensely changed my life. They help me to accomplish more and to feel like I can reach all the many goals I am working towards every single day. I encourage you to create good habits and that will lead you to greater success in the future. They can be very small things, but after putting in that effort every day, you will accomplish big things in no time. Lastly, I wanted to share a personal goal that I have that goes beyond just being a pharmacist. I have worked in a few different places over my career as a technician and a student, and I've noticed the stark contrast in cultures from one pharmacy to the next. In my experience, one small thing that can make a huge difference in the atmosphere of a workplace is being kind to others as well as yourself. It is easy to get frustrated when others don't finish their tasks on time or consistently show up late for a shift, but nothing, comes, nothing good comes from treating that person poorly. It leads to contention and stress in a workplace that exhausts everyone to the point of breaking. I know it's not easy, and that's why I've made it a goal of mine to treat everyone with kindness and respect that I hope to receive in return. I have also made it a goal to treat myself with that kindness. At the end of each rotation, my preceptors would go over things that I did well and things that I should continue to work on. I always had so much anxiety beforehand, thinking about all the things I struggled to do and all the goals I still hadn't met. During each evaluation, I realized I was much harder on myself than any of my preceptors ever were. I'm trying to be kinder to myself and notice the things I do well, as well as the things I can work on. I encourage you all to make your future places of work somewhere that you and your coworkers enjoy being and that you can take time to be kind to yourself. Thank you to all of our friends, family, professors, preceptors, and mentors for the support and guidance you have given us while we try to balance school, work, and occasionally fun. And to the University of Utah College of Pharmacy, class of 2023, we did it. Thank you, Autumn and Evan, for your inspiring messages. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, we will now award the diplomas for Doctor of Pharmacy and Doctor of Philosophy degrees. Dr. Heather Nyman, P4 Teacher of the Year, will read your names, and we would ask that you please come forward. Uh, Dr. James Heron, Associate Dean for Academic and Student Affairs, will hood the graduates. Candidates for the degree of Doctor of Pharmacy. Mena Abdeen. Jesse L. Anderson.
Jason Ashmead. Randy Atwood. Brittany Janal Brito. Riley Christensen. Jacqueline Joe Clark. Alexandra Galval. <laughs> Karina Diane Gibb. Jennifer Giles. Evan 
Kevin K. Haas. Roxana Elizabeth Hedges. Katerina Campanella Jackson. Kenzie Johnson.
Michelle Petrolia.
Tanner T. Spriggs. Chanceline Esam Tebow. Michael Lewis Tyler. Chutyan won. for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Minji Go. Aditi Karat.
Fong Lu. Night. Let's hear it one more time for our class of 2023. Yeah! Bravo, everybody. Okay, now it's time for the administration of the oath of a pharmacist, Dr. Karen Gunning who is our Associate Dean for Community Engagement, will now lead the PharmD graduates in the Apothecary Oath. We invite all PharmD graduates to arise and read along out loud as Dr. Gunning leads us in the oath. It is so wonderful to see you all here today, but I actually also would like you to listen to the words of the pharmacist's oath, so I'm gonna ask you to just say two words. I'm gonna ask you to say, I will, after each of the lines. I would also like any pharmacist in the room to please stand, you don't have to say, I will, um, and just to let our graduates know about all the support that they have in this room, on this stage, and in our community. Thank you. Okay. So the first, you don't have to say I will after the first thing. I promise to devote myself to a lifetime of service to others through the profession of pharmacy. In fulfilling this vow, I will consider the welfare of humanity and relief of suffering my primary concerns. Okay. I will promote inclusion, embrace diversity, and advocate for justice to advance health equity. I will apply my knowledge, experience, and skills, I call that the pharmacist brain, to the best of my ability to assure optimal outcomes for all patients. I will respect and protect all personal and health information entrusted to me. I will accept the responsibility to improve my professional knowledge, expertise, and self-awareness. I will hold myself and my colleagues to the highest principles of our profession's moral, ethical, and legal conduct. 
I will embrace and advocate changes that improve patient care. I will utilize my knowledge, skills, experiences, and values to prepare the next generation of pharmacists. And finally, you can say I do to this one. I take these vows voluntarily with the full realization of the responsibility for which I am entrusted by the public. Thank Wonderful, thank you and congratulations. Awesome, it's official. Well, that concludes our convocation ceremony for the class of 2023. After the faculty procession leaves the auditorium, please stand as the graduates also leave. Feel free, audience members, to meet your graduate outside on the front steps of King, uh, Kingsbury here. And from there, we hope you will really uh, take the time to come up and join us for a reception that will be held in the atrium at the College of Pharmacy. You'll enjoy some uh, great refreshments there. Um, the parking lots around the building are all free for this afternoon. But if for some reason you can't find an open stall in one of those lots uh, that doesn't have a reserve sign on it, uh, park in the covered building east of the college and use the kiosk code FARMGRAD. That's FARMGRAD. Once again, my heartiest congratulations to each and every one of you.